Folks, getting some breaking news in now. We've got a decision on that baseless lawsuit brought by Trump-hating New York Attorney General Leticia James against the Trump Organization. New York judge has just ruled in favor of James, saying that President Trump committed fraud and deceived banks and insurers by overhauling his assets and exaggerating his net worth on loan applications. Leticia James says Trump must pay a $250 million fine. Joining us now with reaction is president of Judicial Watch and author of A Republic Under Assault, Tom Fitton. Tom, always great to see you. You know, I'm sure right. President Trump's going to appeal this, but what do you make of the whole case, the fact that these charges were even brought to begin with? Well, this was a political um, investigation and prosecution of Trump uh, prior to the criminal charges that were brought by uh, James' uh, Democratic ally, Alvin Bragg, and then obviously uh, the Biden administration. And uh, it's no surprise the judicial system in New York is anti-Trump. Uh, he's a successful businessman. And the idea that uh, any of these banks or anyone else was deceived uh, by Trump's uh, financial statements, uh, to me, just uh, is, is unbelievable. And um, so the summary finding by the judge is going to be a problem for President Trump in this litigation. But it's, again, most people rightly discount these investigations. And frankly, uh, the politicized nature of the judiciary isn't helping um, uh, re, uh, reassure people that justice is being fairly administered. And I think politically, this is just going to be another blip for Trump as he you know, proceeds with the campaign. Yeah, let's turn to uh, some more politicization on the federal level. Senator Bob Menendez, his own party is asking him to resign. There are those of us who know the history here. Menendez has been on the outs since not going along with all of the Obama's anti-American agenda. And given the abusive, crooked conduct of the DOJ in the last decade, should, should Americans be very leery of jumping to conclusions here on Menendez? Well, the problem with having a corrupted and compromised Justice Department, you can't, you know, trust them to prosecute anyone in the political system without asking the question of who benefits, right? And in the case of Menendez, he has a long record of a scandalous behavior, to put it mildly, and he's been on the target of the Justice Department for some time. And as I've noted previously, typically he would be part of that protected class, like Hunter and Joe whose comparative corruption makes uh, Menendez's alleged corruption seem really quite trivial uh, and in terms of money and, and, and other misconduct. Uh, but because, as you noted, that Menendez is not exactly on board with the uh, radical agenda, certainly on foreign policy with respect to Cuba and Iran, uh, he didn't have many friends in the Obama administration and certainly doesn't have any friends in the Biden administration. And my question for the Democrats calling on him to resign now is what did, he, what did he have to do in order to get you to call on him to resign? Is it only criminal prosecutions? There's all sorts of other, uh, other evidence of misconduct by Menendez uh, that I would have thought would have caused some discomfort in the Senate, but their ethics committee blessed him previously. So now all of a sudden he's a bad guy and uh, what better way to distract from Biden corruption uh, than to go after a Democrat who is uh, no friend of the regime in terms of their foreign policy agenda? I've said it quite often. Thank God for Judicial Watch because of all the great work you do. And it relies on something that we Americans call free speech. According to a recent poll from Real Clear Opinion Research, one third of registered Democrats believe that Americans, quote, have too much freedom to speak freely. Tom, free speech is, is a bedrock principle of being an American. And I've often said that these pro-China Democrats no longer wish to continue being Americans. Didn't this group of Democrats just kind of prove my point? Well, I mean, just look at the Biden administration. And, and you've got a multi-billion dollar effort to suppress free speech. It's not only the Biden administration using the abusing the powers of government to censor Americans by the tens of millions. You have these ally, allied outside left-wing groups and academic forces also all, all geared towards suppressing speech. Uh, you have the European Union geared towards suppressing speech. It's a transnational effort to suppress people's uh, freedom of thought and, free to, and freedom of speech. And, uh, and those of us on who oppose it, 
we're far and few between in terms of the uh, being able to fight back. And thankfully, the courts have kind of tried to restrain the Biden administration, uh, but there's still too much censorship. And uh, the First Amendment has never before, at least in modern American history, been under as much attack as it is now under the Biden administration. Yeah, by Americans. Uh, Tom Fitton, thank you very much. I always appreciate the good work you do in the visit.